Good morning and how are you? I hope everybody out there is safe and healthy and happy. And you are watching the Cannon County Chamber Connection. And as always, that's brought to us by DTC Communications with our thanks because that's a great opportunity to showcase our county and our businesses and we do appreciate it and I'm sure they do too as well as our organizations because we have a lot of organizations. <laughs> okay, fall colors, golly, they're beginning. And I'm hoping that this year the weather will, <clears throat> will make it possible to where they will last a little longer and be a little more vibrant because I love the fall colors. And you know, everybody always runs off to um, Gatlinburg or someplace, well that's fine. But if you wanna see some beautiful scenery, you just need to come to Cannon County. You can't beat Short Mountain in the fall. Or any entrance or exit to Cannon County will give you those fall colors uh, that you want. And you know, you can always stop at our square and shop at our businesses around the square. We have great restaurants in town, several of them, that if you'd like to eat, you'll be happy with that. Um, and also their shopping at the Art Center has a gift shop. And the things in the gift shop at the Art Center are artisan items, so you won't find anything made in China or Taiwan at the Art Center, but they have a great gift shop. And a lot of people that come in and shop there are pleasantly surprised because they don't realize the Art Center has that. And the Art Center is open. It's open until two o'clock in the afternoon and it opens at 10, except on Mondays and they're closed on Sundays and Mondays. But, you know, just come to our, our town we've got. If you can't see everything in one day, you can stay at the Cannon Inn, or we have a bed and breakfast on Short Mountain that is called Gabriel's Gardens. And we also have an individual cabin that can be rented so we can fix you up and you won't have to go all the way to Gatlinburg. You can just come here. Now don't expect Dollywood because we don't have that. So. I, I hear plans are in the making. We're going to call it Carolwood. <laughs> no, I don't have, no. no. That probably wouldn't work, but thank you anyway. Uh, would you? I would just, li I'd like to see a miniature golf come to Cannon County. I would, I like to play miniature golf. But anyway, we want to invite you to come and spend the day in Cannon County because we have some great uh, places for you to visit and see. And if you just want to drive around, you can go down to Gazaway. Uh, they have a great, antique store down there along with a bank that Gary Hancock and his family have completely restored and it is something to go in and see because it's just like it was when it was doing business. So that's something unique that you can go and see too. So we just want to invite you to come here, enjoy the colors. Like I say, they're just beginning, but a few more cool nights and I hope this hurricane business that's getting ready to come through here on the weekend. And we were going to have our toy drive, our uh, toy drive this weekend, but um, I'm thinking that probably the rain will overtake that one. And I hope we don't lose a lot of the leaves during that rainstorm. I do have guests with me today. And of course, my name is Carolyn Motley and I'm with the Chamber of Commerce. And we have Keith Ready, who is with the Cannon Courier, and he is also the Vice President of the Chamber. And we are here to talk to our first guest is Lisa Baird, and Lisa is the Director of our Domestic Violence Program. Good morning, Miss Carolyn. Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, you know, I heard a report, and this is sad. I wish we didn't even have to report on domestic violence, but I heard a report, and I'm not sure if it was news or where it was that domestic violence, due to the fact that everybody's been homebound, has went up. Yes, ma'am. It has, uh, of course, we know with 
the abuser being in the home with the victim, uh, it's caused a lot of issues, a lot more than normal, that now the victim doesn't even have a way to, to get out to escape. Right. Uh, they're trying to leave because their, their abuser's right there with them at all times. So it, it has gone up. Uh, we, we've All the shelters that are in, in the state of Tennessee are pretty much are full right now. Uh, of course, we have a 15-bed shelter here in Cannon County, and we're full, um, and we usually stay full. But um, it's like one in three women will be a victim of violence in their lifetime of domestic violence, and one in seven men. So it's not just you know, geared to the women. The men probably don't want to tell you that right. they are. A lot of men you know, won't come forward and say, anything, but uh, women are predominantly the, the majority because of the fact, you know, they are women. But, um, you know, we also deal with elder abuse and child abuse as well because that's domestic violence as well. Right. You know, the state report came out just, a uh, comptroller's report came out just uh, last week where they were talking about elder abuse and mm -hmm. how, how it has increased dramatically. Exactly. In the state, in Tennessee, and exploitation. How much do you, in, in your processing and stuff with the victims that you work with, you see them straight through the court process and everything? Yes, yes. we help them with, all of our services are free to our victims um, that come in. Uh, we do all the orders of protection in Cannon County, which is a civil matter at first, but right. when, if they violate it, then of course it turns into criminal matter. We do all the orders of protection. We help with counseling, uh, food, emergency shelter, clothing. Uh, we help them to find transitional housing, jobs, whatever they need to become self-sufficient, abuse-free. But we also go to court with them for criminal court as well as civil court. So let's say there were charges brought against the abuser right. uh, and they were arrested for domestic assault, we go to court with them for that as well. Our, our clients never go alone. And we are the liaison between the DA's office and all victims of violence in Cannon County. And I'm seeing a lot, because I've covered the courts and everything, I'm seeing a lot of people come through the courts since COVID Mm -hmm. for aggravated domestic yes. assault. That's domestic assault with a weapon. Yes, or if there's uh, strangulation involved, if they've yeah. tried to strangle Oh, that would be aggravated. That would be aggravated because okay. you're cutting off their, their right. way of breathing and, and able to survive. Listen, if I'm being abused, it's aggravated. I don't care yes, what they is. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you really this. Put this it. Is, I think this is a good question. Ultimately, as director, what would you like to see happen to people who are the, who get charged with domestic assault and they are guilty, what would you like to see happen? We need stricter laws um, because right now, okay, if let's say that you're arrested for domestic assault, right, they put you in jail for 12 hours, which is a, they consider a cooling off period. Yeah. Uh, then they can be bonded out, and yes, you know we do the order protections. They've got um, you know bond conditions that says they can't go anywhere near their, their victim, but they don't care about that. Right. So once you take the, the victim or, or you take that person out of, they leave, their chances of dying jump 75% yep. when, when a victim leaves a domestic violence situation because you've taken that person's power and control away from them. And when you take that power and control away from them, then that really upsets them and they've got to have that back so they can function. And they're going to do whatever it takes to get that, that person back, you know. They don't care about the law. They don't care about, you know, the consequences because they get a slap on the hand. They get, you know, they're back out. And yes, we may get this person um, away from them, and they get on with their life and start a new one. But then they go on to their next victim, and their next victim, and their next victim. So well, we need a lot of stricter laws. Now, Lisa, I would say the transitional period from the time that they come to you, mm -hmm. and if they do absolutely stay where the, the abuser can't get to them or have no part of that abuser, that takes a little time. That doesn't does. happen. You can't fix that overnight mm -hmm. because when, when victims come to us, you know, they have been, um, their self-esteem is very, very low. They've been told, you know, you're nothing, you never survive without me. We've had clients come in that all they've ever been able to do is take care of the house and whatever their abuser has said to do, they do it. You know, and they control every aspect of their life. They'll, you know, okay, we're gonna go to the store, I'm giving you $20, you go in, you get me a pack of cigarettes, a, uh, a loaf of bread, gallon of milk, bring back the change, and a receipt, so I can account for every penny. And you think that's, you think yeah. that that's the way it works. It is, yeah. it is. Or if, you know, you're allowed to go by yourself, okay, it's 10 miles to the store, 
he's go, they're going to go out and they're going to check the, the speedometer to see, okay, you went, it's 10 miles there, 10 miles back, that's 20 miles. You went 30, where'd you go for the other 10? And I, I, I agree with you. There needs to be stricter laws because yes. I sit in court and I exactly. watch this go on, and I know it's got to be frustrating to you because it frustrates oh, me yeah. to, to watch these. And, and it's nothing that the, the court system can do. They're only bound by what they right. can do legally. And the but, court system and our officers do a great job. But they They're let these they guys can. off too easy. Mm -hmm. You get a, uh, Most of the time, you get an agreed order of retirement. Mm -hmm. And that's what the DA strikes, and he usually strikes with the public defender because the, you know nobody can afford it. The, right. The, the, the assailant can't uh, afford a, an attorney by himself, so he gets the public defender. You get this agreed order of retirement for 11 months, 29 days. But what's one of the stipulations? You can go back and see your your victim, but you got to get along with them. Right now, sometimes they have a no, a no contact order on there. And yeah, it, but very few. Yeah, there's some that they will. But the fact is, they're going to abuse again. And, and right. And if they hit you once, they'll hit you again. Well, what happens if there's children involved? Do they get visitation rights? Well, then that, that would be in, like, the civil matter when you go in, into court and you have to, they'll have to file petitions for, you know, custody or, or have a parenting plan or whatever that parenting plan says. Now, there have been incidents where they do a no, no contact for the children as well, if it's that violent or whatever, you know, if the children are involved. Well, usually if they're... If they're abusive to their spouse, mm -hmm. they're going to be abusive to the children. And see, that, that's another issue because uh, um, people say, well, why don't you just leave? You know, you can, you can leave. And, okay, so let's say that the victim leaves and takes her children. And she has nowhere to go. She's got no money, no job, no vehicle. Uh, what's she, where's she going to live? She's going to be on the street. Well, the state's going to step in and take the children. Where are they going to put them? back in the home with the abuser because they have a job, they've got a roof over their head, and just because they're beating this, the, you know, the, the victim doesn't mean they're harming the children, even though the statistics say there's at least, you know, I think it's, uh, I can't remember my, my number right offhand, but I know it's like 15 million kids every year exposed to domestic violence. 60% of those children have been reported, that's just reported cases, uh, physically or sexually assaulted. So they're being abused too. But what would what would any parent do that's a loving mother? She's going to go back home and take a beating for her children, well, you know. So um, then, you know, because he still has rights, he's their father. He, and you have to, until you can prove that he's harmed those children physically, there's not a lot you can do. He well, still has a lot rights. of this is we have other organizations that come into play then, like the Child Advocacy right. Center and... This type of thing, exactly. but that doesn't stop the abuse from no, it happening. Doesn't. No, it doesn't. And see, when we do orders of protection, we can give our our victim uh, custody of the children temporarily till they can get something done in court. Mm -hmm. And that because you know we don't want those children in danger either. Have you seen a, an increase in number of order of protections? Oh yes. And, and yes. When they get to the court system, they don't ever talk about you know. Well, there there are a few that mm -hmm. talk about the order of protections, but. Most of the time, they come into court to get sentenced or whatever, right. and they don't have those order protections. Well, the place. orders of protections are, uh, we have order protection court on Mondays. I got you. Because uh, it's a civil matter, like I said, right, until right. they violate. Then when yeah. they violate, it will turn into a criminal matter. Yeah. So we have order protection court on Mondays, and then there's criminal court on Tuesdays, and sometimes Thursdays. Thursdays. Yeah. And of course, we have a wonderful court advocate, which is Tammy Jones. She's, yes. she's fantastic. I love Tammy. She's a mess. Um, and she does all, all of that. Uh, I, I will do orders. I still do orders of protections because she and I are both on call, you know, on one week off the next. And I still, if I have to, I'll go to court as well. But normally she goes to court now. Um, that's one less job I, I have. Yeah, I haven't which seen is great. you in court. So, yeah, I haven't seen you on Tuesday. It's been a while. It's been a while. And so, because I have other stuff to do at the office. And Tammy, had, I have every confidence in her. She does wonderful. She's, she's got some help now, doesn't she? Uh, yes, she has an intern from NPSU. Her name is yeah. Sydney Germain. She's a really sweet young lady. Yeah, and she's learning her. a lot. She's actually decided uh, she has changed her way of thinking. She wants to go strictly into domestic violence when she gets out of, of social work, when she, gets, when she gets her degree in social work. Um, but, um, yeah. I'd say that's a special calling. It is. It is. Uh, <laughs> you see a lot. Uh, we practice trauma-informed care at the office because we're, we're dealing with 
clients that have been traumatized, so we're helping them to learn how to deal with their trauma, but we have to also practice that too because we're dealing with everything that they're dealing with. So. See, I would be, uh, that probably wouldn't be a job I could do because I don't know if anybody ever, and probably the audience, some of the older ones might remember a Carol Burnett episode where she was the court recorder. Yes, ma'am. And the guy was uh, testifying, and she couldn't be quiet. She had to tell him things. <laughs> and I laugh every time I see that because I think, that would be me. I would have to say things to him whenever he was. I just, you know, in, in court, you know, just knowing the people that, that are up there, it's amazing that nobody said anything, you know, when the major, and, and we've got some that, you know, just like you said, the opposite sex where the female mm -hmm. has been beating the male. And, and we had oh, a few of those of in the last couple be? of weeks, yes. you know, come through. And, and I'm thinking, okay, how in the world does some guy lose to you? I mean, how in the world did some guy, you know, get you mad enough to where you may have run over him or something? We don't ever get the police reports well, on it. but she didn't have to make him mad. Yeah, I mean, she, or whatever the case might be. But, yeah, she went off on the guy. It has you know? nothing to do with. And some some of these are mental disorders. Oh, are yeah. Not? Some yeah. are, yes. We've got but, I mean, it's, it's all about power and control. Right. That's what domestic violence is. It's not about. Well, you made me mad. Of course, they blame you for, for everything. The mental disorders are not right. power. No. You know, the one that I'm thinking of in particular is not, it's not a power thing. Right. It's a mental thing, and you, you exactly. better escape with your life because this person's dangerous, you exactly. know. Exactly. You don't have very many men that come and stay at the domestic no, violence No, no, it's very rare no. because most time, if it's a man, he they, has they have options and places to go. Mm -hmm. A woman, three kids. You know, can I can I come to your house? And uh, no, <laughs> not but, unless he's not. And, in and the a picture. lot of our men that we get to are a lot of elderly men where there's elder abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a grown. Uh, but we do have men of various ages. But we get a lot of, of senior men where and women where it's a um, adult child or, or a caregiver that's a live in or whatever. It's it's a domestic situation. And they're they're now abusing that elderly person, but yeah, we do have men, and when I've had men say, "Well, I can't be a victim of violence. How could you harm me?" And I'm like, "Well, I can harm you without touching you." You know, they're like, "How do you do that?" Well, you know, like you said, you could run over them with a vehicle, you could shoot them, you could <laughs> well, I had put that. stuff in your food. You know, you got to go to I bed. I was something. watching. The, I was. Uh, You're had giving a crew them ideas, Lisa. Up in they already Nashville know that. <laughs> Motor Speedway was up there and had a crew and it was a husband and wife and the husband got mad or the wife got mad at the husband about something this had been brewing so they went to work with their problem next thing I know I get a call from the supervisor yeah you might want to we're, we're sending two or well, three we're sending three people back it's a husband and wife team and somebody else and what's the reason well the wife just tried to run over the husband with a truck yeah you know and it was an underlying reason from something before mm -hmm. you know and, and a lot of times in the cases that I've known that I've dealt with in workers and whatnot, drugs are involved, you know, kind of like, well, like what we talked about, the attitudes, big time attitudes, control. Yeah, I've seen that. And you, you deal with that a lot outside of the exactly. workforce, yeah. you know, when the husband comes home and chores aren't done and, you know, or whatever. You didn't cook my dinner right. I, want, I wanted steak instead of chicken I but it comes dinner. down to power and a lot of that power is attitude yeah you know but once you take that like i said once a victim leaves their chances of dying jump 75 yeah. percent because because you've, you've just taken, taken that, that power mad away from them right and you've just made that guy mad so much more matter exactly. woman so much more you know and they'll so do yeah. whatever it takes to you know find them but like i said our law enforcement does a great job they're, they're wonderful to us they patrol our area really well if they see something out of the ordinary, they're going to stop, you know, and if, he, if we call them, I mean, they're there in a heartbeat. Of course, we have cameras and we've got, you know, fence and electronic gate and all the little gadgets. To, but, you know, there's always that fear that somebody will try and come in. So, in other words, it'll, if you touch their gate and you're not supposed to be, you're going to get electrocuted, huh? You might. Yes. <laughs> Say yes, Lisa. You, might get shot too, you never know. Going back to the order of protections uh -huh. and going back to the court system and the agreed order of retirement, what is the main reason why those orders of retirement get sent out to where they can have contact with the victim? Because you know it has to be negotiated. Right. 
between the victim and right. the A lot of abusers. times there's, there's kids, they want to make sure that the, the abuser gets to see the kids and they can have peaceful contact to exchange the children. And a lot of times, you know, they'll make it at like the police department or something where there's yeah. somebody visible that can watch or there's cameras so you can record if anything happens. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of it's with if there's children involved. Gotcha. You have an event that you have yes, every year that's coming up, don't you? We sure do, because this is October, and as you know, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, along with Diabetes Month, and I think Agent Orange Month. And, and Breast Cancer Awareness and Month. Breast Cancer, there's yep. several of them. But today we're going to talk about domestic violence, because it's Domestic Violence Awareness. And we have a candlelight visual. Uh, it's it's a wonderful, t uh, we have a wonderful time. We have. Uh, it's going to start, this, it's going to be on the 23rd this time, October the 23rd, at the community center. Because the last two uh, uh, times we've had it, we've been on the square and it's rained. So we're in, we're, we're made plans to take care of that this time. We're at the community center over at the Head Start program. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll be indoors so we can make sure nobody gets wet. wet and the candles don't, you know. <laughs> exactly. Dry out. Gotcha. Uh, so we're going to start, it'll be at five. Uh, Food will start at five. Our board is awesome. We've got a wonderful board, and uh, they're going to do a, a little fundraising at the uh, off to the side on the event. They, they're they're doing food. Uh, you can purchase a meal, and it, apparently they've had an Italian thing. I'm supposed to have somebody here talk about that, but they didn't get to come with me. But they've come up with an Italian theme. I know we're having. Uh, uh, I said, oh, I'm eating um, chicken alfredo, lasagna, um, spaghetti, garlic bread. Uh, desserts of all kinds uh, and drink and, and it'll be ten dollars a plate you get uh, your um, main course and you pick of what's your one they have and your salad uh, drink dessert and your, your bread uh, for ten bucks and then it's ch children five to ten or five dollars and then a four and under are free and our board's doing that so they're they're, they're wonderful and we've got some awesome cooks too and then we're gonna have some desserts uh, that we can auction off, they can auction off as well. And I know they've already hit me up for some stuff and I told them I would fix them. So if if uh, uh, Sheriff and um, uh, Mr. Uh, Avery, Bill Avery's out there, uh, I am uh, put it up for two banana puddings already, so <laughs> <laughs> they love my banana pudding. Mr. Bill, one time we had a fundraiser and he, he paid, uh, I think, $75 for my banana pudding and a, uh, a uh, coconut cake, so. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So if y'all are out there, come so in. So with this being but a candlelight vigil, yes, we're gonna does have, this mean that we're going to eat in the dark? No, you don't have to eat in the dark. Well, That's the food's going to start. Well, the bin itself yeah. doesn't start to six. Oh, okay. And we'll have uh, music. We'll have uh, some testimonials from some uh, former victims, which are now survivors, telling their stories. Uh, we'll have a lot of people from the community there sitting up booths and talking about what they do, like the Child Advocacy Center. Uh, I'm trying to get CASA involved. The coalition's coming down from Nashville, the Tennessee Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault. They'll be there. Um, I'm trying to get, you know, just anybody from the community uh, to tell about their agencies and what they do and the services they offer. And we'll also have some prayer. We'll be lighting candles. We'll have our T-shirts up. That uh, There's a clothesline project that uh, we do and uh, all the DBs do, and it's where you take... Uh, clients and they can actually put their emotions down on a t-shirt and artwork and we hang those around uh, and and some of them are really yeah they'll get, they'll, they'll get you <laughs> some of their artwork is amazing and and their I guess their emotions coming out and everything that they've been through but it, it'll be a great time so please come out um, and it's open to all the public, isn't oh, it? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We want everybody involved because it is it's domestic violence awareness. We want to educate the community. We want to uh, help uh, support and and, and uh, provide, you know, the support that they need for victims that might not be ready to come out yet and say, hey, I need help. But we want them to know that you're not alone and we're here to help them. Okay, you know, how can they contact you, Lisa? Well, um, you can contact us at uh, Cannon County Save, which is 615-563-6690. Um, um, if you need our P.O. Box, we don't give out our location, but no. if you want our P.O. Box, it's uh, P.O. Box 329, that's Woodbury, Tennessee, 
of course, 37190. But if you're a victim of, of domestic violence or you know somebody that's a victim, you know, please give us a call. We're here to help. Or if you want to get involved and you, or you want to donate or you want to volunteer or whatever, you know, please, we can always use you. That's right. Because it's These rampant. people Can't come you? to you with nothing. Exactly. And, uh, you know, when they, when they leave us, we've got, we try and help them. We've had people donate furniture and stuff. So when they leave and we've got them set up in housing, okay, here's a couch, here's a table, you know, they can start over. Cause that's basically what they're doing is starting over. You know, we've got the wonderful thrift store here in town and they help us with clothing for them. And um, they help also with uh, some of the proceeds from the thrift store come to us as well as the backpack program. The Methodist Church set that up. And so, I mean, yeah, um, we try and help them any way we can. And we've got okay. a lot of wonderful community support because we couldn't do what we we do now without the community. Oh, no. You're your volunteers and people and churches in Cannon County, oh, yes. I've always said they would have a hard time operating anything if it weren't for those. And we've got some wonderful churches that help yeah. here in town. The Community Experience helps. Elkins, I attend Elkins Church Christ, they help. Do a wonderful job. The Baptist, First Baptist. Uh, First Methodist. Uh, uh, Wilson do. Hills. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, all the churches out here, they, yeah, they've they been do. wonderful to us. Okay, well. But please come down and join us, and you need to come and join us on the 23rd. And Keith, you come. And 23rd, we're yeah, we're off football that night, so. Okay. No ball game on 23rd. Oh, no, no. We could Might go eat yeah. lasagna by candlelight. Yeah. Yes, you could. <laughs> and yeah, actually, and my intern. And I'll candlelight by holding my lasagna over it to warm it up a little bit better, right? Hey, it, it should be it's good and warm. Yeah. My, yeah, intern, right, my intern, Sydney, uh, she's actually Italian, so I, it has been promised that it's going to be an official Italian lasagna. So she's been setting all this up for you. Um, yeah, she's been doing a lot of it. This she's is the working. person that was probably supposed to be here. I'm well, glad to see our community here. centers being used. Yes, that's a great. That's a great area, it and is. it needs to be used. It is, and we're very fortunate to get it because, like I said, we don't want any. We'd love to have it on the, on the square again, but we can't do rain again. No, I know. <laughs> I I know about outside events. I sure do. It was it was cold and wet. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. Well, thank you for we having will me. Do this again. Yes, ma'am. And thank you all for having me. Y'all have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you, you Lisa. Okay, that's one of the things that's going on in October. Good grief. I've got a whole lineup here of things that uh, are happening in October, but I have another guest joining us right now. And of course, I see this woman every day just about. And I have Beth McCrary here, because she's right here with me. <laughs> um, I, Beth is our director of the Art Center in Cannon County, and they've had a rough year this year, just trying to put things on and still follow the guidelines for yes, the COVID-19. But in business, yep. Yeah. We've had a little bit of a tough time. But we've had some things going on. We've got um, a concert. Shake, Rattle, and Roll. I know a lot of people are, know them because they're all local, local guys. They'll be here the 16th and 17th at 7.30. And we only have 68 seats in the theater, which we can seat up to 250 for concerts. So we have everybody social distanced to the max. There's no, you know, every other row is blocked off, and then there's three seats between everyone. Um, we ask that everybody wears masks, and we take temperatures on the way in. So we have them coming up. They'll be at 7.30, like I said, the 16th and 17th. And then we have an outdoor event coming up on the 24th. We're still gonna ask that people wear a mask when they're shuffling around outside and we'll have them distanced in little, we're gonna paint circles on the, on the concrete and such so that you know where you can sit. Uh, we're gonna have food trucks. We're having Shake, Rattle, and Roll back for a Halloween session and uh, Along with another one. Kelsey Steele's coming, and some people may be familiar with her. She's kind of an upcoming country artist. She'll have an acoustic set. And we have a costume contest for the school-age kids. We're going to have food trucks and a movie at 8 o'clock. It'll be Hocus Pocus. And you're also going to have door prizes, right? Yes, we will have door prizes. Mm -hmm. We and sure will. There'll be four baskets given away. You know, um, this is a free event, mm -hmm. but a free event. Um, 
for the baskets especially, a $5 donation is, is... We're asking for a $5 right. donation, yes, and we're asking for donations anyway. But yes. $5 will get you in for, it gets you in for, you know, all of them. So if you don't win the first one, you might win the second one. And the movie is Hocus Pocus. Yes. I like that movie. I've watched it. It's a cute times. movie. It's a good one. It'll be on a big blow-up screen outside. Um, and then on November 7th, we're having the um, Stones tribute band called Music City Stones. So it'll be the Rolling Stones tribute band. They'll be here at 5 and 7.30 on the 7th. They're going to do two sets Oh, they're going to do two sets. Huh? In one day. Mm-hmm. Just because they come out of Nashville, that's where they're from, yeah. and they didn't really want to do, since we have such limited seating, they didn't want to come two nights. Right. So they want to do two in one day. And but, I'll tell you what, you know, you talk about music, because like I said, told you all before, I was at the Lynchburg Music Fest. The big resonating thing about music artists when they got up on stage was how much they loved being able to get back up on stage mm -hmm. and perform. That is just... I mean, one guy, what was it, D Dustin Moore, Justin Moore, country artist, he about <laughs> cried. That was his first time on stage, and he about just, and he did, you know, shed a tear, because it was like, look, you know, that took, that stripped us, of, that's how they earn a lot right. of their money, so right? Money. Mm -hmm. And the music business, I mean, there's a lot that goes on. People think, well, it's all about album sales and stuff they should be able to make. You know, a lot of that stuff doesn't. They've got a lot of overhead, you mm -hmm. know, that they've got. Well, to you have a lot work. of them that haven't done an album. Yeah, and some of them, like the Kelsey Steele, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if she's ever done an album, maybe an EP or what they call it. You've got to kind but, of build your way up to an but album. But these groups mm -hmm. that you're bringing in, like the Rolling Stones tribute band, same thing, you know, mm -hmm. the bars and the, the, the clubs, they were close, so they couldn't perform. So, yeah, right. they'll. They're happy to jump at any opportunity. Well, you know, you have such varied uh, opinions about masks and everything, but this is how it is. If you're going to have some things and try to get back, you're going to have to use them. You're going to have to wear a mask and sit social distance. And the Art Center has done a good job. Of, I mean, you're still going to be able to hear <laughs> the band or whatever, you know, you're, that, there's just going to be less people in there. But don't get that, don't let that deter you from coming and everything, because this is, that's kind of silly, really. We want you to be safe. We want you to go home without catching anything. And all of these events I'm going to tell you about here in a minute, they're not all requiring masks, but if you want to wear a mask, no one's going to say a thing, because let's face it, it's real. And so whether you like it or whether you don't, you know, that's part of it. And for a while, it's going to be part of it. But there's no need of sitting back and just being mad. No. <laughs> we are still following the Tennessee Pledge. I mean, it's, it still says, recommends wear masks, stay six feet apart for venues such as ours. And we're, we're right. still following that because we feel like that's the... That's the best thing. The for safe us to thing do. to do. And we have another event in November, uh, early November, that is, it's not for everyone. It's really more for the schools. It's a very small cast that we're we're streaming to the schools. We're we've never done this before, so we're going to see how this goes. But it will be open to the public on Broadway on demand at a later date. It's a short one-hour show for kids called Polka Dots, the Cool Kids Musical, and it, it's really cute. But it's about bullying. And uh, so we will be streaming that, like I said, to the schools, but we will also have it up for anybody in the public who would like to see it. Well, one thing that really hurt the Art Center, too, was early on when COVID first came out, you were beginning with your school shows. Yes. Where people bring, I mean, different field schools trips. bring yeah, the their schools field, trips field trips here. Right now. And that had to be canceled, of course, most right. of that. Yeah, we do three of those a year, and those are the biggest part of our income because we don't, you know, we don't get money from county, city, or we do get a small grant, but our income is our ticket sales. Right. And the school shows are our biggest ticket sales. So we have, we have been hurt by that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because I remember we have bus loads. Bus loads, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. Right, because we'll do 12 to 15 shows of those. Right. And there's bus loads coming in. But 
but we're trying to ease back into this as best with all of these events that we can. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and we'll see how it works out, but we certainly don't want this to strike up again and everybody's back to being closed. So right. <coughs> we want you to get out there and have a good time and everything, but you're gonna have to do a few things different than you've done in the past. And this is one of them. And I don't know how long the mask, and I don't think anybody else does either, how long the mask situation will be with us. But there's no need to uh, get so upset about it. If, if you're honestly so upset about having to wear a mask where they're required, then just don't go. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's the solution to that. But acting bad when you get there and say, well, I'm not doing, and ranting and raving doesn't make any difference. So there you go. That's my opinion. <laughs> and it should be all of yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously it is because we're requiring them here. But, <laughs> but anyway, well, Beth, mm -hmm. <clears throat> It's been very quiet here. It has been. Quiet. But I will say this, there are still people that come in here just because a lot of them are traveling around and they see this building and they don't know what it is. And they just That's come true. in to they see don't. what they it don't. is. There are a lot of people who don't know what it is. <laughs> um, we have put our gift shop online. Everything's not up yet, but we have put it online. So you can go on there and start browsing around. Um, we're putting more and more as time goes on. And we've also started doing, since we didn't have White Oak this year, our big craft fair, um, we have started, White Oak has started like putting out videos of artists. We have seven up so far. We go to their studio, we film them and make it, cut it down. We film them for about an hour and then cut it down to a six minute video. And they're very informative. If you go under our, if you go to our website, artcentercc.com, and go to crafts, and then artist insider, I think we have seven up right now. Mm -hmm. But it, they all tell you how they how they make their craft, how they do it, and where they do it. It's it's they're very interesting. And like so, I say, anything you find in the gift shop is made by an artist. Right. Most of these artists are either come to White Oak or they have something in the gift shop. And we're trying to promote the artists, you know, because that's what White Oak does. And since we right. didn't have that this year, we're trying to do it a different way. And that was a big loss, too, because yes, that big. brought in people from out of state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I worked that several years, and yeah, you yeah, got a big crowd. Yeah, it brings in five to 6,000 people right. through here. And, you know, a lot of people do their Christmas shopping there. They do. So. Well, I had a young man that came in. My office is in a corner of the gift shop. And um, I was impressed. He came in uh, this last week and he was looking at the pottery. And um, he was probably in his 20s, maybe his late 20s. And he, I asked him if I could help him. He kind of looked indecisive. And he said, uh, no, he says, I'm going to look around a minute. He says, it's our anniversary. And he said, uh, I'm not sure which year pottery is the theme for that anniversary. I'm not sure which anniversary that is. But I was impressed that he knew that. And so I says, well, there's a lot of pottery items there. Well, he chose a cup. And then he went over and looked at, we have some handmade scarves that are beautiful. He looked at them. Well, he looked at everything in the gift shop, but I told him, I says, I'm impressed that you knew what anniversary, what the theme for that anniversary was. And he goes, oh, I do. And he, I says, well, if <laughs> your wife likes perfumed soaps, we have some of those handmade soaps. And he goes, well, I can smell them and I'm headed that way. So we got several items. And um, I just thought to myself, I says, well, she should be real happy and impressed that you knew all of this. And he goes, well, she's worth every cent of it. And I thought, well, how often do I hear this? 
So I was impressed with that. But he just showed up in the parking lot. You know, he doesn't, he just knew that they were handmade items, you know, artisan made items here, so that's good. Anything else going on? Not right at the moment. I'm sure and we'll also, later. Um, Short Mountain Cultures will probably be part of your yes, outdoor event. Yes, they will event. actually. They are going to, they won't officially be open, but they're going to set up a tent. You will be able to go inside the store, but they're going to set up a tent with some hot chocolate. Um, I think they're going to have apple cider maybe or hot cider and cookies. And we're going to have at least two food trucks, and we're going to have, if any of you have been to White Oak, the kettle corn guy is coming. So he's going to have well, the yeah, small Well, yeah, you've got to have popcorn. popcorn. So it will be actually popcorn, <laughs> but it's kettle corn, which is better, really. But um, anyway, so he'll be set up out there also. So they'll I, all be in the front of the building. I remember my nephew in California. <laughs> he was young, and he had just moved out on his own. And it was Halloween, and he said that, my sister asked him, you know, told him he needed to get trick or treats. And he says, oh, I got that covered. He says, I just pop a big bowl of corn and I put it outside on a table and I just tell them to help themselves. Oh. <laughs> wow. That will work thought, now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, no, but now. I Somebody didn't. Somebody be chugging down the neighborhood with that whole big bowl in their hands. I don't think it. Everywhere. I don't think it worked then, but it was funny <laughs> that that was his idea of doing trick or treats. <laughs> well, all, all you have to do is put that big bowl of popcorn out there, and then just turn off your porch light, just right? Say, help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's pretty good. All righty, Beth. Anything else you want to talk to us about? I think that's it for now. <laughs> I've just about got the whole chamber board here today. Mm -hmm. uh, she is on our board for the chamber also. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we all work together. It's okay. It'll be fine. Yes. Well, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. All right. <laughs> okay, Keith, is there anything that you're wanting to tell? I've got another guest yeah, we've got another that guest. is going to join us. And she is also on the board, in fact. Hello, Miss President. She yeah. is the president of the Chamber of Commerce, and she is also, that's a non-paying job, by the way. Yeah. And she is also a, um, the director of our Adams Memorial Library. So come, girl, and sit down. We're on a time what are you schedule supposed here. To tell us that she didn't tell okay, us. you have to bring your chairs. That shindig. Oh, on that's going to be a great night. Yeah, it oh is. Goodness. Spooky, kooky shindig. You got to bring the kids, your own chairs. What age are the kids for the the costume? Yeah, you will at nine. Oh well, they're uh, they're kindergarten through. Yeah, yeah that's going to be. Fun. I'm going to come in costume anyway. <laughs> we won't judge you. You know what costume I, I wore one year? You don't want to know. No, never mind. No, I, I think you can't get dangerous for adults. Told me I that. came to a costume contest one time as a whoopee cushion. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's well, now that works, now. but okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Marsha, I almost forgot why you're here, but you also have <laughs> <laughs> you also have just some programs. Right yeah, I then. just it just real brief because I don't know what's going about, on at the library too, don't you? Right, and um, we started to, trying to um, have some classes uh, again. Uh, right now, Shama's teaching a, um, a online safety class. It's like how to stay safe when you're using your cell phone or if you're on the computer. And um, in two weeks, on October 21st, we're gonna have, is it fake or fiction class? You know, how can you tell if it's fake or real news? And how to... Um, There's a little flag that says, no, unfortunately, fake news. unfortunately, that's not true. If there's a website that you've never heard of before and they're spouting news, they're fake. Yeah. yeah. But that, that's gonna be Wednesday, October 21st at 11 a.m. And um, if you want, just give the library a call and sign up. That'd be great. Is there a charge for that? No. 
Everything at the library is free. Okay. It's always free at the library. Okay. And, um, and we also have a coding club. It's an online club, or you can come into the library. And it's, um, it's put on by Predna, and they've done an excellent job of breaking it down into very small um, segments, and kids can get it. It's fun for adults. And that you can find on our web page or um, Facebook, how to sign up for that and get in and start coding. What or are you coding? Websites. No, well, whatever you want. Uh, so on one, um, yeah, it would be websites. They did um, a Star Wars picture, okay. you know, change the character, yeah. change the colors, and he does different things. Yeah, it's, it would be com whatever, software. You okay. Code okay. Like software. How long does and that coding class last? I mean, um, well, we we're going to do it all year. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to say it would take me all year and plus to learn some of that code. I, and if I, we've got the interest, it's something that we keep purchasing each year gotcha. to to have. Yeah. But it's on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. You can go online and get help if you need help, or if you want to code with other kids or other adults. Yeah. You can, we can get you into rooms on the line, oh, cool. and you can talk back and forth and code. Or you can stop in the library at 3 p.m., and we'll do it live with masks. Okay. Now, <laughs> see, six here we go again. <laughs> Going to have to wear them masks. Yeah. So that's basically, I just wanted to say, you know, um, our doors but are open. But the library open. is open. We are open, and we are starting to try to um, provide some more services. We've been providing computers and faxes and copying and printing for months now, but now we're going to um, try to start up the technology classes. And your security class where you're teaching security, uh, what, when is that again? That was today. It's right oh, now. Today. And then I'm, I, we're going to uh, repeat it in November, yeah. um, but we'll, first we're going to do um, a resume class the first week of November. Um, and a, an Excel class the middle of November. And I'm sorry, I don't have those dates. We haven't quite nailed down, but, <clears throat> and then we'll start over again with the safety class. But I encourage everyone that's uh, watching this to uh, take advantage of this, especially security class next month, if you missed it th today, mm -hmm. because, uh, and we'll talk about who this happened to, but uh, a very uh, popular person here in Candy County that owns a business she got big time. Somebody came in and just stole all kinds of information. Could have cost a lot of money. But if you got these security measures that this class is talking about in place, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a business. It can be personal. Right. Because it came through a personal computer. There, you know. Yeah, there are just some very simple things you can do. And uh, the people out there, the thieves, and they're getting so creative. Oh, yeah. And so you just have to keep up on what's the new thing coming around so that you're aware. Yeah. See, I'm all been, and still I am, under the impression that if you're smart enough on the computers, you can get into any of them. I don't care what you've got on there. Well, you know, the schools are going through their virtual learning, and uh, mm -hmm. Director Curtis talked about during the last Board of Education meeting that there was a student that what, fifth, sixth grade. And he figured out how to hack into the school system computers. Of course, they, they caught it pretty quick. And they brought in dear old mom to tell her, hey, your son's not being a very good boy. And the next thing you know, the student, they, they revoked his virtual learning privileges. And he was back <laughs> at school the next day. And mom probably took a switch to him at that point in time. From what I don't I know that they do that anymore. But, uh, some of them do. Take some switches still, too. Some of them do. They just don't want to report it because it would be considered <laughs> in this day and age as child abuse, right? Yeah. So. Okay. But. Well, I'm running short on time, so I got to go over these events. Martha, you, I'm Marcia. You're welcome to stay, or if you need to get back, it's up to you. Probably. I'm gonna. I'm gonna run. I thank you very, very much. Well, thank you. Bye, bye, President. Okay, I'm gonna do a short follow-up on our car and truck show. That was September 26th. We had 154 registered entries, and there was more out there that didn't register, but uh, we had to park them in the middle 
because we really ran out of parking spaces. But that's okay, I was thrilled with that. It was a great day, 70 trophies, six cash awards. DTC gave away a 43 inch TV. Uh, there was a drawing, $186 went to one of the lucky ticket holders. O'Reilly sponsored the top 40 trophies. The top sponsors were the Canon Courier, B&P printers who designed and printed 2,500 brochures, Middle Tennessee Electric Corporation, O'Reilly Auto Parts, DTC Communications again, Global Industrial Components, Greg Golf with Exit Realty, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company, and Vance Brothers Motor Company were our big sponsors. Plus, we had so many more throughout our county that helped put this event on, and it was a great success this year. It really was. The best of show went to Steve Westbrooks driving a 1966 Chevy Nova, and I love the name of the paint color was root beer, and it did look like root beer, <laughs> but it was a pretty car. Okay, Thursday, October 15th, a merchants meeting is, has been scheduled at 6 p.m. at City Hall to discuss the Cannon Country Christmas, which is scheduled for November 20th and 21st, and all merchants are welcome to attend that meeting. Friday and Saturday, October 16 and 17, is the Cannon County Fall Festival. Uh, and it will be around the square at all of the businesses, I believe, and you'll be able to enjoy deals, door prizes, food trucks, and much more. So that's a good day to visit too. Friday and Saturday, October 16th and 17th, Shake, Rattle, and Roll will be appearing at the Art Center beginning at 7.30. If you like Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, Carl Perkins, and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, you'll love this one. And if you've seen it before, you'll want to come back and see it again and bring somebody with you. But you better call for reservations because they'll book up early. Um, October 16th through the 31st will be the Haunted Hayride, which will take place at the Short Mountain Distillery. Uh, they're going to have a costume contest on October 18th at 8 p.m. and pumpkin carving contest on October 24th at 8 p.m. We may want to check that date on the costume contest because that is on a Sunday. Um, I just want to say that October 16th to the 31st, it's not all the way through, it's every weekend, 16th, right. 17th, 8th, or 23rd, 24th, and the 30th, 31st. So we may want to check that costume contest because that would fall on a Sunday when I believe the hayride is on that Saturday. I don't think they're doing anything on that Sunday. Okay. But Take his word for it, guys. I don't have a phone number to call him right away or else we well, well, I, I believe that the it. hayride and that is put on by the Short Mountain Fire Department. Right, right. Because they usually do the haunted woods. Yeah, I DJed it last yeah. year. And yeah, they do a great job. Don't miss this event though. Come out and support the Short Mountain Volunteer Fire Department and this hayride, you won't be disappointed. I no, promise. you won't. They do a good job. Saturday, October 24th, spooky kooky shindig right here at the Art Center. And Beth and I just talked, we just talked about that. Saturday, October 31st, is the first pumpkin festival on the square, uh, 10 to 8 p.m. Trick or treat candy will be given away at 5 p.m. And if you want to join the painted or carved pumpkins, you have to take them to the courthouse on Friday from two to seven and the costume contest will be on the 31st. Yeah, there was you, a rumor going around that Mayor Andy Duggan had canceled uh, Halloween. And during his question and answer session on Monday or Tuesday, whenever it was, he said, no, I didn't cancel Halloween. No, he Friday told Friday. me he's gonna have it yeah, Halloween on, goes um, on, yeah. And that is closing off High Street and College right, Street. Right, right. We also want to mention hungry. also October 24th going back, um, the uh, Gasaway uh, community Homecoming, was putting yeah. together a 
fall on the, under the mountain uh, event that uh, featured a craft fair that was going to start from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then a fish fry from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That was supposed to take place October the 10th, this coming Saturday. However, they, because of the hurricane coming through, they thought better of it and said, we're going to preempt it because of weather. So they're moving it to the 24th. And uh, there was a lot of people planning on coming out to this craft fair. They were really excited about it. So uh, make the date change as well on your calendar, October the 24th. In Gasway, they'll have that craft fair, and there's going to be a lot of vendors come out and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they, they have a big time. Uh, Friday and Saturday, October 30th and 31st, the first week for the Lions Club Coats for Cannon will take place. Uh, any Cannon County resident who needs a coat, whether they're adult or a child, can get one at no cost. It will be held at the storage building next to the Lions Club building. Friday 4 to 8 and Saturday 8 to 12 and then the following weekend which will be Friday and Saturday November 6th and 7th will be at the same place at the same times and then of course November 20th and 21st will be the Cannon Country Christmas on the square Santa will be available for pictures you may not be on his lap but he's going to be there and you can have a picture made with him and I will talk to you more about that next month. And also, daylight savings time ends on November 1st. Do we really want an extra hour in 2020? I wish it would stay this time. Yeah, me too. <laughs> we thank you for watching, and we hope you join us again next month. Thank you.